tropical cyclone Winston hits Fiji. PNG Air assists passengers of cancelled Mangiloples flights. And Correctional Service Minister concerned about lack of statistics. This is National MTV News with Lorraine Genia. Hello and welcome to Saturday's News. A swap arrangement has been agreed on by the PNG Air Management for passengers who have purchased tickets for the cancelled travel air service. Passengers will travel free of charge on PNG Air on the same rate, route. This week a court order was issued for Travel Air to cease its operations pending the hearing of a case relating to its alleged failure to pay lease fees to aircraft owners and American-based company Aero Century Corporation. Four aircrafts were leased to Travel Air in 2011. In a statement received by MTV last night, according to Chief Commercial Officer Paul Abbott, PNG Air made this arrangement to assist stranded passengers. Mangi Lopela's passengers with unused tickets will travel pre on PNG Air on the same route. Mr. Abbott said a careful decision was made because of the sudden cancellation of flight operations. This will affect travel plans for many passengers who have chosen to fly with Mangi Lopela's. PNG Air is willing to help passengers who have already bought and paid for tickets to travel on Mangi Lopeles. And PNG Air will help to ensure that people can still connect with friends and families. Mr. Abbott said that any customer of Mangi Lopeles who has a valid unused ticket can exchange their ticket for a space available on a PNG Air service. There is no additional payment. Mr. Abbott said that PNG Air understands that for many people, funds are scarce and they cannot afford to just buy another ticket while they wait to see if they can get a refund on their cancellation ticket. PNG understands the situation will affect the traveling public and will do its best to help passengers. Mr. Abbott said that this ticket swap arrangement will be available until Monday, February 29. Passengers on cancelled travel air services wishing to swap to PNG Air must present their unused ticket to the nearest PNG Air sales office throughout the country. Fabian Hakelitz, National MTV News. Mendy Nursing College in the Southern Highlands province is struggling to build capacity while enrolling students. Power outages and sourcing water is a daily issue for students and staff. Despite these challenges, 67 nursing students graduated with a diploma in general nursing yesterday. Mandy Nursing College is a government-run institution and is the only higher learning institution in Southern Highlands province. Over the past years, challenges faced by the college has been given little attention. But yesterday, the institution graduated 67 students with diplomas in general nursing. College principal Sister Lucy Lenga says this institution needs attention. It needs water supply, now you need him sent by generator. Water supply, Mr. Sorry, long old beginning, he also go down the water. Currently, two double story classroom, a new library, IT lab, and female dormitory is under construction and near completion. The college is affiliated to the UPNG School of Medical Science, but more effort is needed to raise teaching methods, tighten its entry marks, and maintain housing for staff and students. But having it linked with universities gives it some sort of status. The next stage is accreditation uh, of all courses to the university. While the trend is to seek employment in urban centers, Chairman of Nursing Council Peter Piden challenged graduates to serve the rural people. You may need to go to the rural majority. Stop long and I'm challenged me giving you blah. MTV caught up with Morobe led Sapolu Basanage, who graduated without any of his family present after he lost all of them in the Rubble Queen Ferry disaster. So now me a bit by my so say mixing paper with me. Now mixing belly see. The graduation is the third for the institution. Jack Lapave, Junior National, MTV News. 
Fiji has been hit by a powerful tropical cyclone. Cyclone Winston has been forecast to move over the main islands of Viti Levu and Vanua Levu this weekend. Tropical Cyclone Winston is packing winds of 170 miles per hour with gusts over 200 miles per hour and is expected to strengthen further before the eye of the storm hits the islands late Saturday night local time. Tropical Cyclone Winston is said to be the strongest storm on record to make a direct hit on Fiji, which is home to a majority of the island nation's 900,000 people. Hundreds of evacuation centers have been activated as the powerful Category 5 cyclone lashes Fiji's outer islands with hurricane force winds of up to 220 kilometers per hour. The Tropical Cyclone Center in Fiji cautioned that destructive wind gusts from Winston could reach up to 225 miles per hour in addition to damaging rough seas and coastal flooding. Communications have been lost to some outer islands after the tropical cyclone ripped through the Lao group overnight. All towns on Vanua Levu are now closed and domestic air and sea travel has been cancelled until further notice. Deli Waigeno, National MTV News. E-learning is a new academic trend for students of Sagiri National High School. With the school's newly established state-of-the-art learning facilities paired with the establishment of Wi-Fi systems on campus, students literally have information on their fingertips. Sagiri National High School has now set the bar for schools of excellence nationwide. Among school facilities officially commissioned yesterday was the school's newly established auditorium. The auditorium was designed to university standards and came with one of technology's most ingenious inventions, the smart board, designed to interact with students like a teacher would. The smart board's capabilities range between running virtual scientific experiments, running tests to students' laptops via Wi-Fi, and providing information from an e-library database. Students were allowed to access the information database, however it is strictly monitored by teachers to avoid misuse of their Wi-Fi privileges on social media. Uh, the kids now, they are more of with the gadget. They're addicted to the gadgets, like they go to the social media, they spend a lot of time, so to, it's very hard for us to control them. So what we are thinking that we will go in their own way, so we will also try to educate them through that media, new medias. Science students in particular were fortunate to have their science facilities and library commissioned yesterday as well. The facilities, valued at around 1.8 million kina, was constructed under Pan Trade Pacific and commissioned by a former student and board of director for Trade Pacific, Ronald Tovue. So as much as possible, we would like to see things that contribute to quality learning. And these are some of the things that are happening. For example, uh, having uh, three disciplines of science, uh, the students wasted no time in using the equipment. Melissa Goviro, National MTV News. The major prize for the nationwide Christmas promotion for South Pacific Paint was drawn today. The promotion started last November with minor scratch and win prizes. However, today one lucky winner picked up the major prize. Henry Tao of Port Moresby is now the new owner of the highest bus. His name was selected out of hundreds of entries in the draw. I'd like to congratulate you that you have won a, a high span. Yeah. Customers had to purchase a Nippon paint to enter the draw. National sales manager Mr. Ashin Sahi said that they had been operating for four years in Papua New Guinea and it was important that they try to reach out to customers. We try and reach our consumers wherever we can. And it's also nice when we can give something nice away. South Pacific Paint specialized in supplying paints for homes and Sahi also said they were grateful to people of Papua New Guinea for the continued support of their quality products. Each and every customer of South Pacific Paint who has purchased the paints to have a chance in this lucky draw. In the same note, I would like to personally thank my entire South Pacific Paint team. Adelaide Sirox Kari, National MTV News. 
Correctional Service Minister concerned about lack of statistics. That story and more when we come back. Welcome back to the news. Correctional Service Minister Jim Simatab says no clear statistics on CS operations in Papua New Guinea have reached his office in the last 12 months. Simatab noted that despite prison breakouts, not all escapees were recaptured and while there are instances of human rights abuse in the prisons, those incidents remain unaccounted for. He says with the appointment of Bernard Nepo as acting CS Commissioner, he believes there will be a closer working relationship with the CS Department and his office. When addressing correctional officers at the acting commissioner's welcome parade at Bomana Jail yesterday, Simatab said for too long ill practices within the jail premises in the country go unreported and CS will be seeing a change in the way the operations are run. How many correctional officers found to be negligent in their custodial duties and have been charged, jailed or even sacked from this organization? How many jail commanders have ever been found guilty of misconduct and have been dis dismissed or jailed? He highlighted that there are five outstanding issues the department will be looking at improving with NEPO as acting commissioner. These areas include major prison review, adoption of the new rehabilitation policy, the promotion of public-private partnership in developing correctional infrastructure, establishing rural lockups and the need for incremental funding. So far under the rural lockup program, only two out of the 14 areas selected for the program were opened, while the remaining 12 remains as work under progress. With the new acting commissioner, let's not continue to look at this business as usual, losing the culture, losing the thinking. Now. Let's be responsible, get up and do something about it. With these outstanding issues at end, NEPO was directed to focus on these areas and report to the minister's office from time to time. Takla Gunga, National, MTV News. The flexible open distance education or FOD system should not be seen as an institution for failures or dropouts. Sundown Provincial Governor Amkat Mai says this system has proven to be successful, opening pathways for many. And there are testimonies from those who studied through the FOD system. The fault system over the last years have provided alternatives and opportunities for many. Governor Amkat Mai speaking at the recent launching of the Vanimo Fault Center Internet Connectivity said the perception of seeing this system for failures must change. To think that this is not a system and that's a system created for the failures. In your school, nobody is a failure, nobody is a dropout. You have potential. With the latest technology, Ford Center in West Sepik Province will now communicate directly with the headquarter in Port Mosby and other 21 centers. World Bank PNG country manager who was the guest of honor said all education institutions like Ford should be seen as investments to the country. Ford Center but can go off to tertiary education and become doctors or engineers to develop your country and support your families. World Bank has two funded projects with the National Education Department, the Ford Internet Connectivity and the Read PNG supplying of reading materials and setting up of classroom libraries in elementary and primary schools. Fabian Hakalitz, National MTV News. Like other public servants across the country, teachers are also feeling the pinch of delayed wage payments. In Lay, primary school teachers' fortnightly payments were delayed since Wednesday, causing teachers to wait extra days to receive entitlements. St. Paul's Primary has revealed the school was told by the Education Department representatives that payments would arrive late. This is Betty Kapus, a grade 4 school teacher from Lay St. Paul's Primary School. She teaches in a government school. The government pays her salary, but this week the pay stopped coming. Wednesday was her payday. She is part of a nationwide group of public servants still waiting for pay. Because I'm living in town, uh, town expectation is too high and 
as a teacher and as a mother, it's too hard for me. So when I heard that, I was not happy. She still has to pay for her housing rent, buy food for the house, pay for her children's school fees, and pay the bills. Yet, like other public servants, she continues to carry out her responsibilities to the state. We need teachers to be happy in the classroom. They partake with the students so they implement what government is required, quality education. Some of these things might affect the work of the teachers, but I hope it won't happen uh, in future. Teachers are optimistic that they may get paid today, but if they don't get paid, the delays will take its toll on their expenses. Colin Barilai, National MTV News, Lay. More dialogue is needed between the national government and the autonomous Bougainville government. This was the alarm raised by ABG's acting chief secretary, Paul Kibori. Mr. Kibori says both parties must work together to implement the Bougainville Peace Agreement. Autonomous Bougainville Government's Acting Chief Secretary Paul Kibori at the National Leaders Summit this week in Port Mosby spoke on the importance of more dialogue between both parties. Dialogues have resulted in achievements as well as challenges for the autonomous region of Bougainville. The ABG believes, us, believes that there is a need for further dialogue between the parties, the national government and the ABG, in terms of the continuation of this program. On infrastructure, it was notable with the use of special intervention funds and other funds provided by the national government. These projects are worth driving investments. To enable the ABG to generate its own revenue, and not to depend too much on the national government. Mr. Cabari thanked the national government with other donor partners for strengthening the engagement with the autonomous Bougainville government in improving infrastructure development. Fabian Hakelitz, National MTV News. Newly appointed Director General for the Office of Library and Archives, Kakaito Kasi, said the people of PNG have missed out on library services for many years. He is determined to make sure that all provinces in the country must have public libraries. Accessibility to public libraries is vital, and this is one area that PNG has been lacking for many years. Library is very important. It complements the education of the children and the public. We know that when you have books are placed in the hands of children, it advances them. They learn how to read and write. The important thing I want to uh, inform uh, the public is that we want to deliver library services and archive services throughout the country. PNG has 23 provinces, but how many functioning public libraries do we have nationwide? I know we currently have about six. Six. The rest have all collapsed. Mr. Kasi has big plans for the country's library services and told MTV News that under his leadership, he will make sure that library services reach the people of Papua New Guinea. These services must, must reach every, everyone in the provinces, even down to the districts. Over the past 22 years, library services have not been fully delivered to the people of Papua New Guinea as deserved. The newly appointed Director General, Mr. Kakaito Kasi, is optimistic that all of this will change and all Papua New Guineans will have access to well-functioning public libraries come 2017 and 2018. Florence John Duo, National MTV News. The Salvation Army has launched its much-anticipated new motel yesterday. The newly constructed motel was built at a cost of 3.4 million kina. According to Salvation Army Territorial Commander Colonel Andrew Westrup, they were able to stick within the budget despite changes during construction. The launch of the Salvation Army motel in Boroko brought much excitement for the Port Mosby ground staff yesterday afternoon. According to the Salvation Army, who was self-funding organization with the new motel, revenue generated 
will support Mission Work Ministry, social and spiritual programs throughout Papua New Guinea. What this means for the Salvation Army in Papua New Guinea is it means funds to deliver our services. Often we get overseas help to, for the services themselves, but what we actually need at this time is money to help the Salvation Army actually deliver those services. So that Construction began in 2011, but with challenges and changes, there were delays. However, they were still able to stick within the budget. Funding for the motel was assisted by the Salvation Army Australian Eastern Territory, who were also present at the launching. The newly launched motel is equipped with 16 rooms, 5 self-contained and 11 single rooms. According to the motel manager, Kila Liana, the rooms are Australian standard. The motel already has shown interest from the mining sector and organizations linked to the Salvation Army. Everything we've got in there is first class in terms of facilities, it's like the best for comfort, so I'm pretty sure that it will go really well. Marilyn Diaukatam, National MTV News. And Trokai Sports is up next. Stay with us for the details. Trokai Sports. Welcome to Trokai Sports. Hikari FC United have defeated PKA Rapatona by one goal to nil in the first round of the finals competition. It took until the 41st minute when Hikari striker Kore Kopaiga latched onto a cross by Tommy Semi to score over PKA keeper John Bai. Both sides were also testing out their new recruits with Langrop Samol, Samol Kinney and Ian Yamo featuring for Rapatona while Tao Winnie made a return to Hikari. The return leg will be played on Wednesday. NRL club, the New Zealand Warriors, have named Ryan Hoffman as captain for the 2016 NRL season. This year will mark the 32-year-old's second season with the Warriors and ninth season playing representative duties. This is Hoffman. Ryan Hoffman is no stranger to the limelight. He is the son of former Canberra Raiders player Jay Hoffman, who also represented Queensland in the pre-origin era. Ryan, who was selected to play for the Australian schoolboys in 2002, started his NRL career with the Melbourne Storms in 2003. In 2007, he was named as the 18th man for Australia in the Anzac Test against New Zealand. Again as 18th man, Hoffman was on standby for the 2007 New South Wales State of Origin in Game 1 of the series. The following year saw Hoffman named in the New South Wales starting side for all three Origin matches. He was also named in the 46-man Kangaroo squad for the 2008 Rugby League World Cup. In 2014, Hoffman signed a three-year deal with the New Zealand Warriors. After just one season playing with the Warriors, the 32-year-old has been named captain for the 2016 season. Ryan's role as captain comes about after former captain Simon Mannerin stepped down from the role. Hoffman is the second Australian to have captained the New Zealand side after Steve Price. Jay Lee Sapies, National MTV Sports. And Trukai Sports ends on that note. Your weather details after the break. Trukai Sports. Southern region, all centres fine tonight and occasional showers tomorrow. In the Momase region, chances of brief showers tonight and tomorrow for Lay City. Few showers for Medang and Wewak and few showers with chances of evening thunderstorms for Bunnymore. In the New Guinea Islands, showers for Kimbe, showers to light moderate northwest winds for Laurengau, and showers and developing rain for Buka, Kokopo and Rabao. And in the Highlands region, showers and morning fog for Goroka. And showers with occasional thunderstorms and morning fog for Mount Hagen, Mendy and Wabe.
And that ends National MTV News. I'm Lorraine Genia. Pleasant viewing. Good night.